air because, as an atheist, he doesn't believe in the afterlife. But I'm not going to John and saying, John, you are condemned. I do not hold the belief that this verse, if it is to be taken literally, is true. My friends who do not believe in Jesus Christ are not condemned. If that's what this verse means literally, then I believe it is wrong. And that is just my opinion. But that's what I believe. It saddens me to think that over the more than 2,000 years since Jesus' life and teaching that some have misinterpreted the gospel in such a way that the result has been prejudice and bigotry. It boggles the mind, at least my mind, to think that one person could hate another person simply because of religion. If I am good or bad as a person, does that change because I am a bad Christian or a good Muslim? No, of course not. I am good or bad regardless of what my religion is. Jesus came into the world with a message of love and hope. He reached out to those who had been pushed to the side. They were the sick and the poor, the disenfranchised. And Jesus rejected the rigid formality of the religious system at the time. That was not important to him. He ate with the unclean. He healed on the Sabbath. He treated women as absolute equals. If you had to place the teachings and the life of Jesus Christ into one of two bins, one being an inclusive bin and one being an exclusive bin, it would have to be the former. The life and teachings of Jesus Christ were inclusive. His message and life were clearly examples of acceptance. And as a result of those teachings and those beliefs, many at the time despised him. Why are we afraid of people who may be uh, different than we are? And put another way, why do we strive oftentimes, or at least allow ourselves to be put into groups with others that only look and act exactly like we do. We miss out on so much when we do that. Those of you that have joined us um, on the last two Sundays in between the services have been very lucky to hear from Yumna Ali uh, from the local Muslim mosque talking about the history of the religion of Islam and kind of the background and what it's like. And she was very open about answering all of our questions and there was a real dialogue going on. And once I have the chance, and I think I would hope that the others would agree, that once you have a chance to kind of really learn a little more about Islam, you realize that we have way, way, way more in common than differences between us. It's the same for Judaism. Way, way, way more in common than has ever been different. We all believe in the same God, the very same God, Islam, Judaism, Christianity. We all trace our religious pedigree back to Moses and Abraham and Isaac. You'll hear each described as an Abrahamic faith or the faith of the book as Ms. Ali talked about today, that book being the Bible, far more in common than not. And inherent in, each, in how each person lives the, their individual lives within their own religion are common concepts of humanity. All of us, regardless of religion, we all have these. People of all faiths look for love and happiness, they desire good health. We all, once, we all want what's best for our children if we have them. We have bills to pay. We need jobs. 
We seek professional fulfillment and respect and dignity. We want to laugh. We want to smile. And we all struggle to understand somewhere, somewhere inside, what is that meaning of life that seems to elude all of us, regardless of our religion or no religion at all. This is true whether you are Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, atheist. It doesn't matter. Which brings me back to the gospel. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The world might be saved through him. I hear these words and believe that God did send Jesus Christ into the world that we all might be saved from the evil that is hate and selfishness and greed and all other things that separate us from our God and from one another. And we can be saved through this message of love and hope, whether we are Christians or Jews or Muslims, or whether we have no particular faith in one God at all. I believe in that message because I am a Christian. I believe that Jesus is God, one of three in one. Jesus has laid out a path to salvation that I follow willingly. I accept both the message and the God. And I'm lucky and blessed to have a personal relationship with my God and with my Lord. I am so pleased to be a Christian. But I find it contradictory to the message of my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ to think that I am better in God's eyes than my friend John or better than Yumna Ali or than anyone else, that I'm better. My friend John, he lives a good and generous and caring life. And simply because he does not believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God doesn't make John any worse or better than me in God's eyes. John's found his path, and I think that Jesus would consider it a blessing to have a non-believer like John in our midst. He would commend John, not condemn John. I know that I do commend John and not condemn him. But the bottom line for me is that I don't have to make that call, do I? None of us has to make that call. In fact, my faith as a Christian, which I absolutely embrace, requires that I love my neighbor as myself and that I not judge my neighbor. That's what I'm required to do as a Christian. I'm going to leave the rest of it up to God. All right? I got plenty to worry about. I got all kinds of problems. You got a few minutes, let me tell you. So let's spend less time and less energy searching to find our differences, all right? And let's dedicate ourselves instead to celebrating all that which binds us together in this world. Amen.